Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage here live in San Francisco for VMware Explore, formerly Got it. VMworld. <laughs> <laughs> We've been to every VMworld since 2010, now it's VMware Explore. I'm John Furrier, your host with Dave Vellante. We have Dave Linthicum here, he's the Chief Cloud Strategy Officer at Deloitte. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on, appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, it's You're great to be here. Epic keynote today on stage. Uh, all seven minutes of your great seven performance. Seven discussion. Yes, very, 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 uh, very <laughs> quick to the order. I, I brought everybody up to speed and left. Well, Dave, it's great to have you on theCUBE. One, we follow your work, been following for a long time. Thank a lot you. of web services, a lot of SOA kind of in your background, kind of the old web SOA, services. SOA, uh, you know, SAML, RSS, <laughs> web services, all that good stuff. <laughs> now, it's, it's, now we're in kind of web services on steroids. Cloud came, it's here, we're right. next gen. Mm -hmm. Um, you wrote a great story on MetaCloud. You've been following the SuperCloud with Dave. Does VMware have it right? Yeah, they do. Because I'll tell you what, the market is turning toward anything that sits above and between the clouds. So things that don't exist in the hyperscaler, things that provide common services above, above the cloud providers are where the growth's going to happen. We haven't really solved that problem yet. And this, so there's lots of operational aspects, security aspects. Uh, and the ability to have uh, some sort of a brokering service that'll scale. So multi-cloud, which is their strategy here, is not about cloud. It's about things that exist in a between cloud and making those things work. So getting to another layer of abstraction and automation to finally allow us to make use out of all these hyperscaler services that we're signing on to Dave, today. remember the old days back in the 80s when we were young bucks coming into the business the interoperability wave was coming, remember <laughs> right. that? Oh yeah, I got a DEC yeah. mini computer, I got an IBM SMA. Unix was going to solve that. I got Unix <laughs> and then, you know, this other thing over here, and LANs and all, and everything started getting into this whole, okay, networking wasn't just coax, you started to see segment, segments. Interoperability was a huge, what, 10 year run. It feels like that's kind of like the vibe going on here. Yeah, but we're not focused on having these things interoperate unto themselves. So what we're doing is putting a layer of things which allows them to interoperate. That's a different, that's a different uh, problem to solve, and it's also solvable. Uh, we were talking about getting all these very distinct proprietary systems to communicate one to another and interrelate one to another, and that never really happened, because right. you've got to get them to agree on interfaces and protocols. But if you put a layer above it, they can talk down to whatever native interfaces that are there and deal with the differences between the heterogeneity and abstract yourself from the complexity. And that's, that's kind of the difference. That works, the ability to kind of get everybody, you know, clunk their heads together and make them work together, that doesn't seem to scale. So and, of, and people got to be motivated for that. Not many people might not be. It has to be money. <laughs> In other words, it has to be a business yeah. for them in doing so. A couple of things I want to follow up on from the VMware keynote this morning. They use the term cloud chaos. When you talk to customers, you know, when they have multiple clouds, do they, are they saying to you, hey, we have cloud chaos, or do they have cloud chaos and they don't know it, or do they not have cloud chaos? What's the mix? <laughs> yeah, I don't think the word chaos is used that much, yeah, yeah, but they do yeah. tell me they're hitting a complexity wall, which mm -hmm. you do hear out there as a term. So in other words, they're getting to a point where they can't scale operations to deal with the complexity and heterogeneity that they're, that they're bringing into the organization because they're using multiple clouds. So that is chaotic. Mm -hmm. So I guess that, you know, it's another way to name complexity. So there's so many services are moving from 1,000 cloud services under management to 3,000 cloud services under management. They don't have the operational team, the skill, skill levels to do it. They don't have the tooling to do it. That's a wall. And you have to be able to figure out how to get beyond that wall to make those things work. So when, when we had our conversation, about MetaCloud and SuperCloud, we, we, I think, very much aligned in our thinking. And so now you've got this situation where you've got these abstraction layers, but, and they're, but they're, I, I, my question is, are we going to have multiple abstraction layers and will they talk to each other or are standards emerging? Will they be able to... You know, no, we can't have multiple abstraction layers or else we just, we don't solve the problem. We mm -hmm. go from complexity that exists at the native cloud levels to complexity that exists yeah. at this thing right. we're dealing with to deal with complexity. So if you do that, you, we're screwing up. We have to go <laughs> back and fix it. So ultimately this is about uh, having common services, common security layers, common operational layers, and things like that, that are really uh, reduced redundancy within the system. So instead of having a, uh, you know, five different security layers and five different cloud providers, we're layering one and providing management and orchestration capabilities to make that happen. If we don't do that, we're not succeeding. What do you think about the marketplace? I know there's a lot of things going on that are happening around this. I want to get your thoughts on, obviously, the industry dynamics, vendors preserving their future, and then you've got customers who have been leveraging the CapEx goodness of, say, Amazon, and then have to solve their whole distributed environment problem. 
So when you look at this, is it really solving, is, it, is the order of operations first common layer of abstraction? Because you know, it seems like the vendor, I won't say desperation move, but like their first move is, we're going to be the control plane. Or you know, right. I think Cisco has an vision in their mind that, no, no, we're going to have that management plane. Uh, I've heard a lot of people talking about, we're going to be the management interface into something. Um, how do you see that playing out? Because the order of operations to do the abstraction is to get consensus, right? Right. First, not competition. Right. So how do you see that? What's your reaction to that and what's your observation? I think it's going to be tough for the people who are supplying the underlying services to also be the orchestration and abstraction layers because they're, they're kind of conflicted in making that happen. In other words, it's not in their best interest to make all these things work and interoperate one to another, but it's their best interest to provide a, provide a service that everybody's going to leverage. So I see the layers here. I'm um, certainly the hyperscalers are going to play in those layers and they're welcome to play in those layers. They may come up with a solution that everybody picks, but ultimately it's about independence and your ability to have an objective way of, of allowing all these things to communicate together and driving this, driving this stuff together to reduce the complexity again. To reduce so a network box, for instance, maybe have hooks into it, but not try to dominate it. Or that's right. Yeah, that's right. I think if you're trying to own everything, and I get that a lot when I write about uh, super cloud and, and meta cloud, they go, well, we're the meta cloud, we're the super cloud. Uh, you, you can't be. In other words, that's a huge problem to solve. I know you don't have a solution for that. Okay, it's going to be many different products that make that happen. Yeah. And the reality is people who actually make that work are going to have to be interdependent, independent of the various underlying services. They're going to, they can support them, but they really can't be them. They have to be an interoperate. Uh, interop, they have to inter interoperate with those services. Do you, do you see like a W3C model, like the World Wide Web Consortium? Remember that came out around 96, came to the US uh, at MIT, and then helped forge some of those early standards in, in, in the internet, not DNS, but like the web. But DNS was already there, and internet was already there, but like the web standards, HTML, kind of had, I think it wasn't really hardcore getting people in a headlock, but at least it was some sort of group that said, hey, intellectually be honest. Do you see that happening in this area? I hope not. And here's <laughs> <laughs> why not? Yeah, here's, here's why. The reality is, is that when these consortiums come into play, it freezes the market. Everybody waits for the consortium to come up with some sort of a solution that's going to save the world, and that solution never, never comes happens, because yeah. you can't get these uh, organizations through committee to figure out some sort of a technology stack that's going to be working. So I'd rather see the market figure that out, not a consortium. What I, what, you mean the ecosystem, not some right. burning bush. Yeah, group. not some burning bush. And it just hasn't worked. I mean, if it worked, it would be great. And we had a, an event on August 9th, it was SuperCloud 22, and, and we had a security, securing the SuperCloud panel, and one of my, it was a great conversation, as you remember, John, but it was kind of depressing in that, I was like, we're never going to solve this problem. <laughs> so what are you seeing in the security front? You know, it seems to like that's a main blocker to the meta cloud, the super cloud. Yeah, the reality is you can't build all the security services in, in the meta cloud. You have to basically leverage the security services on the native cloud and leverage them as they exist. So this idea that we're going to replace all of these security services with one layer of abstraction that's going to provide the services so you don't need these underlying security systems, that won't work. You have to leverage the native security systems, native governance, native operating interfaces, native APIs of all the various native clouds yeah. using the terms that they're looking to leverage. And that's the mistake I think people are going to make. You don't need to replace something that's working, you just may need to make it easier to use. Yeah. Let's ask Dave about the sort of the discussion that was on Twitter this morning. So when uh, VMware announced their you know, cross-cloud services and, and the whole new Tanzu 1.3 and, 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 and Aria. There was a little chatter on Twitter basically saying, yeah, but VMware, they'll never win the developers. And John came and said, well, hey, hang on. You know, th th if, if you've got open tools and you're embracing those, it's really about the ops and having standards on the ops side. And so, my question to you is, does not, VMware not exactly have, what I said, but close enough. Sorry, I mean, I'm <laughs> paraphrasing. Yeah. You can you know, fine tune it. But, but does VMware have to win the developers, or are they focused on kind of the right areas, that whole, you know, ops side of DevOps? Focus on the ops side, because that's the harder problem to solve. Mm -hmm. Developers are going to use whatever tools they need to use to build these applications and roll them out, and they're going to change all the time. In other words, they're going to change the tools and technologies to yep. do it in the supply chain. The ops problem is the harder problem to solve. The ability to get these things working together and, uh, and running at a certain uh, point yep. of reliability where the failure is not going to be there, and I think that's going to be the harder issue, and doing that without complexity. Mm. Yeah, that's the multi-cloud challenge right there. I agree. I, the question I want to also pivot on that is, is that as we look at some of the reporting we've done and interviews, data and security really are hard areas. People are tune, tuning up, 
DevOps in the developer market's booming, everyone's going fast, fast and loose, shifting left, all that stuff's happening. Open source is booming. Toga party, everyone's partying. <laughs> Ops is struggling to level up. So I guess the question is, what's the order of operations from a customer? So a lot of customers have lifted and shifted. Some are going all in on say AWS. Yeah, I got a little hedge with Azure, but I'm not going to do a full development team. As you talk to customers, because they're the ones deploying the clouds, they want to get there. Right. What's the order of operations to do it properly in your mind? And what's your advice as you look at a, a strategy to, to do it right? I mean, is there a playbook or some sort of situational you know, sequence? Yes, one that works consistently. Is number one, you think about operations up front. And if you can't solve operations, you have no business in rolling out other applications and other databases that quite frankly can't be operated. And that's how people are getting into trouble. So in other words, if you get into these very complex architectures, which is what uh, multi-cloud is, complex distributed system, yeah. and you don't have an understanding how you're going to operationalize that system at scale, then you have no business in building the system. You have no business of going in a multi-cloud because you're going to run into that wall and it's going to lead to a an outage, it's going to lead to a breach or something that's going to be company killing. So, a lot of that's cultural, right? Having, having the cultural fortitude to say, we're going to start there, we're going to enforce these standards. That's what John Cleese said. Yeah. yeah. Cleese's famous line. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. So, <laughs> so, uh, so what happens if, the, if the, that, as a consultant, if, you, you probably have to insist on that first, right? Uh, or, I mean, I don't know, you probably still do the engagement, but you, you're going to be careful about promising an outcome, aren't you? You're going to have to insist on the fact they're going to have to do some advanced planning and come up with a very rigorous way in which they're going to roll it out. And the reality is if they're not doing that, then the advice would be you're going to fail. So it's just not a matter of when it's, when it's going to happen, We're going to, but at some point you're going to fail. Either number one, you're going to actually fail in some sort of a big disastrous event, or more likely or not, you're going to end up building something that's going to cost you $10 million more yeah. a month to run. And it's going to be under-optimized. And is that effective when you, when you yeah. say that to a client or they say, okay, but, or do they say, yes, you're right? I view my role as a, someone like a doctor and a lawyer. You may not want to hear what I'm telling you, but the thing is, if I don't tell you the truth, then I'm yeah. not doing my job as a trusted advisor, and so they'll never get anything but that from us, you know, as a firm, and the reality is they can make their own decisions, and we'll have to help them whatever yeah. path they want to go, but we're making the warnings in place to make it. And, and, and also, also, situationally, it's IQ driven. Are they ready? What's their makeup? Are they have the kind of talent to execute? Um, and there's a lot, and believe me, I totally think, agree with on the ops side, I think that's right on the money. The question I want to ask you is, okay, assume that someone has the right makeup of team. They got some badass people in there, coding away, DevOps, SREs, you name it, they got everyone lined up. Platform teams, as they said today on stage, all that stuff. What's the CXO conversation at the boardroom that you, you have around business strategy? Because if you assume that cloud is here and you do things right and you get the right advisors in, the next step is, what does it transform my business into? Because you're talking about a fully digitalized business that converges. It's not just IT helps you run an app, back office with some terminal. It's full-blown business edge, app, business model, and innovation. Is it that the company becomes a cloud on their own and they have scale and they're the super cloud of their category, servicing a power law of second place, third place, SMB market. So I mean, Goldman Sachs could be the service provider, cloud for financial services, maybe. Or yeah. is that the dream? What, what's the dream for the, the, the CXO staff? Take us through that. Your what they're trying to do is get a level of automation where they're every, able to leverage best of breed technology to be as innovative as they possibly can using an architecture that's near 100% optimized. So it'll never be 100% optimized. Therefore, it's able to run, bring the best value to the business for the least amount of money. That's the big thing. If they want to become a cloud, that's, that's not, a, not, not necessarily a good idea. If they're a finance company, be a finance company. Just build these innovations around how to make a finance company be innovative and different for them so they can be a disruptor without being disrupted. I see, we're, see a lot of companies right now, they're going to be exposed in the next 10 years because a lot of these smaller companies are able to weaponize technology to bring them to the next level, digital transformations, whatever, to create a business uh, value that's going to be more compelling than the existing players. Because they're on the CapEx back of Amazon or some technical innovation, is that what the smaller guys? What's the, what's the lever that beats the... 
It's the ability to use whatever technology you need to solve your issues. So in other words, I can use anything that exists on the cloud because it's part of the multi-cloud. I'm able to find the services that I need, the best AI system, the best database systems, yeah. the fastest transaction processing system, and assemble these things together to solve more innovative problems than my competitor. If I'm able to do that, I'm going to win the game. So it's a buffet of technology. Pick your yes. their meal. I, I want to pick, <laughs> something. This operations first thing is uh, sitting in my head. Remember Alan Nance when he came in the cube and he said, "Listen, if you're going to do cloud, you better change the operating model, or you're, you're going to make you know maybe you'll drop millions to the bottom line." He was at CIO of Philips at the time. You're not going to drop billions, and it's all about you know the zeros. Right? So, uh, do you find yourself in a lot of cases sort of helping people re-architect their operating model as a function of of, of what cloud can en can enable? Yeah, every every engagement that we go into has operating model change, op model changes, mm -hmm. and typically it's going to be major surgery. And so it's uh, re reevaluating the skill sets, reevaluating the operating model, reevaluating the culture. In fact, we have a team of people who come in and that's all they focus on. And so it used to be just kind of an afterthought. We'd put this together, oh, by the way, I think you need to do this and this and this, and here's what we recommend that you do. But people who can go in and get cultural changes going, get the operating model systems going to get to the folks where they're going to be successful with it. Reality, if you don't do that, you're going to fail because you're not going to have the ability to adapt to a cloud-based uh, cloud infrastructure that you can leverage at scale. Mm. Gave us like a master class here yeah. on theCUBE at VMware Explore. Uh, thanks for coming on, thanks for spending the valuable time. Just what's going on in your world right now? Take a quick minute to plug what's going on with you. What are you working on? What are you excited about? What's, what's uh, happening? Love and life. I'm just running around doing, uh, uh, doing things like this, doing a lot of speaking. Uh, you know, still have the blog on InfoWorld and have that for the last 12 years. And um, just loving the fact that we're uh, innovating and changing the world and I'm trying to help as many people as I can as quickly as what's I can. What's the coolest thing you've seen this year in terms of cloud kind of either weirdness, coolness, or something that made you fall out of your chair. Wow, that was cool. I think the AI capabilities and application of AI. I'm just seeing use cases in there that we never would have thought about. The ability to uh, identify patterns that we couldn't identify in the past and do so for, for the good. I've been an AI analyst, it was my first job out of college, and I'm 60 years old. <laughs> so it's, it's matured enough where it actually impresses me and so we're seeing applications not right now. Not just NLP now. anymore, is it? No, no, not <laughs> list. that's what I was doing. But it's, we're able to take this technology to the next level and do, do a lot of good with it, and yeah. I think that's what just kind of blows me out of the water. Oh, I wish we had 20 more minutes. You know, one, 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 one more master <laughs> class soundbite. So we all kind of have kids in college, Dave and I both do, young ones in college. If you're coming out of college, CS degree, or any kind of smart degree, and you have the plethora of now what's coming tools and unlimited ways to kind of clean canvas up by application, start something, what would you do if you were like 22 right now? I would focus on being a multi-cloud architect. And I would learn a little about everything, learn a little about the various cloud providers, and I would focus on building complex distributed systems and architecting those systems. I would learn about how all these things kind of, kind of run together. Don't learn a particular technology because that technology will ultimately go away. It'll be displaced by something else. Learn holistically what the technology is able to do and become the orchestrator of that technology. It's a harder problem to solve, but you'll get paid more for it and it'll be a more fun Systems job. thinking, big picture. Big picture, how everything comes together, true architecture <laughs> problem. All right, Dave is on theCUBE. Masterclass here on theCUBE. Yeah. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, Explore 2022. Live back with our next segment after this short break. <laughs>